A comment about JavaScript best practices prompted this tutorial. We will take a look at some of the do's and some of the don'ts associated with JavaScript. Welcome to another tutorial from All Things JavaScript where we help bridge the gap between novice and expert. JavaScript offers a lot of flexibility. So unlike many languages, there is not always an agreed upon preferred way to solve problems. However, there is a lot of agreement about certain things you should do and certain things you should avoid. We're going to take a look at a few of those things. So let's get started. First, we'll look at the do's. So things you should try to do while you are coding in JavaScript. Now, the first one is to always declare variables. Now, the reason this is important is because if you don't always declare variables, you can create a global variable. Let me just show how this is done really quick. So if I have a function like this, and inside this function I plan to use a variable, well, if I'm planning to use a variable, then I should declare it. If I don't declare it, if I just do something like num equals one, something like that, well, that now becomes a global variable, and it's declared on the global space. So let me show that. So if I open up the console here, and then I refresh this page, and I invoke that function test, you can see I get an uncaught reference there. Num is not defined. So it's telling me that the variable has not been declared. Now I'm getting a message here. I'm getting an error message, but the reason I'm getting that error message is because I'm using strict. Notice I have strict at the top of this file. I have a tutorial on strict. If you'd like to view it, I'll include a link in the description section of this one. But let's say that I didn't have that in my code. Let's see what happens then. Strict helps us avoid this problem. So let me refresh. And now I'll invoke test. Notice I don't get the error message. And now if I look at num, num is now on the global namespace. So it is a global variable because it was not declared previously. Now, if I just get in the habit of always declaring it with var, let, or const, whichever I choose to use, now if I invoke test, it runs. And num is not defined on the global namespace. So it's not a global variable. So a couple of ways to avoid that happening, you can use strict as a part of your code, or you can just make sure that you define all your variables. And I recommend that you define all your variables. Just get in the habit of doing that. And define them at the top of your code. That way you know they're always in one place. That would be another recommendation that I would make. So always declare your variables. Use the triple equals instead of the double equals. Now, the reason this is important is because the double equals does coercion. So it does type conversion before it checks to see if the value is equal to each other. And so if you want to check to see if the two values are exactly the same, you need to use triple equals. Now, there are some situations where you may want to take advantage of the double equals because of the coercion that it does. If that's the case, then go ahead and use it. But you should be intending to use it when you use it. There should be a reason for it. By default, you should always use the triple equals. If you need a review of coercion, by the way, I have a tutorial on that, which I'll include a link to. All right, the next one. Use semicolons. You're probably aware that semicolons are not required when you're writing JavaScript code. but it is a good habit to get into to always use those semicolons. Without that, you could run into some problems. Let me give you one for instance. If you are combining your code with other code and you don't have a semicolon, it's possible two lines could be placed together, which could cause some issues. And JavaScript would see them as a single line instead of two separate statements. Now, another issue with the semicolon feature that Douglas Crawford talks about 
is that sometimes JavaScript can insert a semicolon where you don't want it. Let me just give you a quick example of that. So let's say that I have a return statement in a function. And I'm planning to return an object, and I do it something like this. Well, when JavaScript inserts a semicolon, it will put one there. And then that will cause a problem with your code. So in a case like this, put the curly braces with the statement so that that doesn't happen. Now, that's probably not something you're going to run into very often, but just something to be aware of with a semicolon. And always use the semicolon. So right here, we would need that semicolon. When we're declaring variables, semicolon at the end of that declaration. Unless you're declaring multiple variables, then use a comma. And you can list those out by separating them with a comma. And then when you're done with that list, make sure you use a semicolon. And I prefer to put them on separate lines because then I can read the variables as well. So semicolon insertion. It's important to use that correctly. The last do we're going to talk about is use the delete properly. So there is a delete command in JavaScript, but many times new JavaScript developers will think it works like a delete command from other languages and will use it incorrectly. Now, the only place you should use delete is if you're trying to delete a property from an object. That is the only place. You should not use it to delete a variable or anything else for that matter. So let me create an object here really quick. Finish creating this one. Oops. There we have an object. Let me save that. I'm going to jump out and jump to the console really quick. Refresh this. And then in the console, looks like I got an error. I put a semicolon there instead of a colon. So fix that, save it, jump out again. And then in the console, if we take a look at OBJ, we can see that there are two properties, first and second. Those are the two properties. Now, if we wanted to remove one of those properties, that's where we would use delete. And you do it like this, obj.first. It will delete that. Now, if we display obj, we can see there's only one property there. So in using delete, make sure that's the only place you use it. Don't use it other situations. So there's our four do's. Now let's go to the JavaScript don'ts, things we should avoid doing. First off, avoid global variables. This was a part of the do's because if you're declaring variables, that will help you avoid global variables. Now, if you find yourself using global variables in your code, take a moment and step back and see if there's a way to make this work without using global variables because we should try to keep those to a minimum. There may be situations where you do need it, but we should try to keep that to a minimum. The problem with global variables is that you can just get conflicts, especially when you're using code from other libraries or frameworks or several of your own code libraries. There could be conflicts that happen with the global variables that may be named the same. You want to avoid that. Now, one thing you should learn to use is closures in JavaScript. Closures can help you avoid those global variables in situations where you think, well, there's no way I can do this without a global variable. Well, closures are power powerful and can help you in those situations. So if you're not comfortable with them, there are some tutorials I have on closures. I'll include a link here. Spend some time getting used to those because they're very powerful. Don't use eval. There's really no time you should ever have to use eval. If you find you're using it, change and find another way to solve the problem. Now, the purpose of eval is it will run text as code. That's what it does. You really should never use it. There is usually another, a way to avoid it. A couple of problems with eval. One is it's slow. It's very slow at executing. But the more serious problem is it can be a security issue. Because it can run arbitrary code, it could be a security issue in your program. So simply 
avoid using eval. And if you've never used it, great. I'm not going to show you how to use it because there's no sense learning it if you shouldn't be using it. Just avoid it. And that's the same with with. If you haven't ever used with, I'm not going to teach you how to use it because it's just something you should avoid. Now, with was brought about in JavaScript as a shorthand way for accessing ob object properties, but it has other issues. So for that reason, just avoid it. If you're using it now, stop using it. If you've never used it, then great. You don't have to worry about it. Fourth one, avoid setting variables to undefined. This one may be something that I prefer more than maybe other developers. But I think you should avoid this kind of statement. Sometimes we like to define our variables when we declare them, which is great. That's great to do. But if the variable may not have a value associated with it yet at some point in the program, then by default, it will be undefined. The system will set it to undefined without you setting it to undefined. And the reason I think it's good to just let the system set it to undefined, so when you declare it this way, it will be undefined. And the reason I think that's good is because undefined then is always what is set by the system as opposed to by you as a developer. If you want to indicate that the variable is empty, then use no. So I would do something like this. If I wanted to set it physically to an empty value, I would set it to null rather than undefined. Like I said, that's a personal thing of me. There's other developers that prefer that approach, but that may not be as agreed upon with all developers, but I think it's a good practice. All right, and the last don't we want to talk about. That is avoid using new with JavaScript objects. So with all JavaScript objects that you define, there is a way to define them using literal syntax. And you don't have to use the keyword new. Now, if you're creating your own object constructor, then in that case, you do need to use new. But for the default JavaScript objects, don't use new. Use the literal syntax. Now, obviously, you should not be using new to define primitives. For example, if you see something like this, you should not be doing that. String is a primitive value. You should not be defining it with new. As you probably are well aware, this is how you should define it. That's the same with numbers as well. Now, the other default JavaScript objects that you should not use new for, one is object. When you're defining an object, do it this way. This is the literal syntax up here. So I didn't use new object to define it. I just use that literal syntax with an array. You should define it this way instead of using new array. If you need an empty array, just do it like this. I remember when I started with JavaScript, I would use new array to create an empty array. But here's how you can do it with literal syntax as well. Regular expressions. Define that with the literal syntax also. Be like that. Instead of using new reg exp. And then I don't think anybody does this, but you could define a function using new function as well. But I think most people define those using either a function declaration or a function expression. And that is the preferred way to do that. So those are some JavaScript do's and don'ts, some JavaScript best practices. And hopefully you found those helpful. Now, before we're done here, please hit the like button. It can help others on YouTube find this tutorial. You can also hit the bell button to be notified about new tutorials when I release them. And if you haven't subscribed yet, hit the subscribe button or click the circle link on the left, the one with my face. I release a new tutorial each week. You can click the video link in the center to access another tutorial right away or click the link on the right to visit my website, allthingsjavascript.com, 
for full courses and a complete list of tutorials. Thanks for watching.